I think this is going to require a second test with a different method. Thanks for tuning in and welcome back to the shop. Now that we have the subframe separated from the chassis, I want to see how much flex there is in the chassis alone. This will help me understand what I need to fabricate to properly spring mount the subframe back to the chassis. So it's time for a field trip to do some backyard science. Literally, backyard. I've come back to an area where we have some reasonably unlevel ground and my plan is to keep three wheels on the flat rock and get one wheel as high as possible until I lose traction on the other side. Now I know that this is not the twist limit and I'm not trying to find the limit, I just want to see where the flex is occurring. You know, I gotta be totally honest with you, this is not at all what I was expecting this test to do. Not at all. Not one bit. You see, the idea was that these two sections of box tube rigidly secured to the center of the frame would not flex when the rest of the frame did. And this would allow me to measure how much the frame twisted as it went to the back. However, it would seem that the box tubes have in fact twisted with the forward section of the frame and they're still pretty much equal when we get to the back. In my mind, I had all the chassis flex happening behind the drop section because I know that this is the stiffest section of the frame. But thinking about it now, it makes sense that the entire frame is twisting and this has to be the stiffest section in order to avoid deforming. With this in mind, it no longer makes sense to do what I had originally planned, which was to have some form of rubber bushing mount at the front end of the subframe. This end of the frame will need to flex and the entire thing is going to be spring mounted. So for test number two, I've attached the box tubing to the original subframe, but both pieces are completely separate from the chassis. This is gonna allow me to twist the chassis and see where the subframe lifts. Once again, I'm not looking for maximum twist. I just wanna see how and where things move. I'm not trying to simulate every possible situation. I'm just seeing how things react. Keep an eye on the passenger side of the subframe as I lift the driver's side front corner up. You can see there is a significant lift off of the truck frame probably about an inch and a half. For reference, the front left wheel is probably about 18 to 24 inches higher than the other three wheels. Here's the same lift from a different angle. Again, notice that the driver's side being lifted does not shift at all, but the passenger side is separating. Let's park the truck here and look at it without moving things. We can see from behind that the subframe is resting completely level at the back and lifting only at the front. This is of course just based on the subframe resting on the frame, so if it were pinned at the front, it would lift at the left rear instead of the right front. But there is significant separation along the frame. So what can we learn from this? Well, this isn't a trick, but it is a tip. Sometimes you're better to experience things with your own eyes and not rely solely on other people's experiences that you can find on the internet. Don't be afraid to get out there and do it yourself. I now feel much more comfortable in understanding the dynamics of what is going on, and that is gonna get reflected in how I build the subframe and the spring mounts, but that is for another video. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. All right, this part's a special request. This button here, that's for Mike, and anyone else who wants to use it, along with that one and that one and this one. So feel free to use those. Somewhere in this mess, I put down my coffee, and I can't find it. I really need to clean the shop.
Land Cruiser, welder, welder, press brake parts, tripod, airplanes and boats, and oh, there it is.